Okay. It's streaming and it's recording, but I'm still setting up, so um, I might cut the recording and, you know. Hello. Hello, I'm everybody. podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Um, has it got... Right, so hang on a minute. I don't have any of the uh, dashboard stuff up. We once heard a story from a driver in downtown your, Halifax, your, Nova Scotia, uh, who was annoyed uh, that a cyclist was slowing him down. Do you know what he said? You're not saving the environment, uh, buddy. That uh, was. Oh my god! I had an autoplay video. Sorry, I did, I couldn't hear you for the last seven seconds because autoplay was something autoplayed on Mastodon. Uh, what's your own cast URL? Uh, it is watch.chrisware.wales. Okay, that's looking good. I think actually, even just as a still. Uh, oh yeah, what was I going to do? I was going to do. Um, I was going to get a little web web browser just for um, props. Um, oh, it's remembered. It's remember remembered who I am on your uh, own cast, which is nice. Uh, uh, yeah, it's got on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Da, da, da. Yeah. All right. So I've got. I've, so what I'm going to. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try try and use the Epiphany browser. I'm going to have it in a nice little corner. Um. Mm. Oh yeah. So maybe if I don't know if if when if you when you work on it again, like is like to maybe either put like a TV in the corner or something, and then we can have like um like a little web browser yeah. that goes inside the TV. Yeah. I don't. Oh, I don't think I'll be able to do it in perspective. The way I've done the image. Oh, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't have to be in perspective. It just it can be. No, oh, it'd be nice well, if it was, but yeah. Or it could be someone holding up a sign in the background. In the bottom left, in the bottom left corner, maybe that could work. Yeah. Um. Right. I don't imagine we'll get too many people in because it's of the time, but we'll no. put it, we'll pop it up on. Pop it up on the old. Might as well, eh? On the peer tube, on the YouTube. Where? Okay. Um. Oh, what shall I? What shall I start? Start. What should? What should my opening browser tab be? I've just got masters on up at the moment. Um. Oh. Uh, Tory to 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 party campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's the main Tory one. Oh. I I checked in with the Tory party website. Uh, the YouTube channel, mm. and they haven't updated it in seven years. Oh, seriously? Yeah, yeah. I'm they must have a deal. That can't be. They must be on YouTube, surely. Um, maybe not. I guess YouTube doesn't. It's more for its Facebook and Twitter, isn't it? Really? Yeah. 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 YouTube yeah, stuff. YouTube's not where. Not where you do that kind of thing, is it? Oh. Okay. Um, but I can do. Conservative Party. Actually, I'll do. See, I could, I could put it here, and uh, you could see the browser it. on the screen, by the way. Uh, no, I will pop that in right now. Oh, okay. Um, conservative Party. There. Oops. Properties. Oh, it's so much faff with OBS. OBS is a lot of fucking faff. Like every time I use it, I think this this should not be this hard. You should just put in a resolution. Mm. And then it should be very like sort of clicky and draggy and droppy. Yeah. There's so many options that like we're we're both quite techy. We're not you know we're not at the peak. We're not peak techy, but we're pretty techy. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff in there I don't understand when it comes to streaming mm. options. Yeah, I've always kind of felt that I'm in a slightly like unique position uh, when it comes to like YouTube and content creation in the sense that a l large chunk, if not a majority, of my audience know more about what I'm talking about than I do. <laughs> that's an interesting yeah that's an interesting mm. point to be in. yeah okay so we've got the we've got the i guess i guess what you have, i guess what you have is like you 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 think about stuff i, I don't mean this mm. to like insult the every but like people things don't really think about it and then when you offer thought about them they're like oh i hadn't thought about that mm. I mean, I went, you know, when I when I started doing like linux and youtube stuff my my goal was always to sort of be a cheerleader rather than uh any kind mm. of any anything else really you know Sort of the propaganda wing of yeah, the force movement. Yeah, a, u a user of it rather than a what's the, what's the word they always use for enthusiast. A user rather than enthusiast. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very enthusiastic about it, but I, I think my enthusiasm comes much more yeah. from the political side of it rather than the technical. Although, no, but uh, yeah, saying somebody's an enthusiast doesn't really talk about enthusiasm. It means it means a. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. All right. So this is the Dargoth Hour, um, which I love Dar the name. Using Dargoth. Dargoth. Wait, no, we've got a contro controversy in episode one. Dargoth. 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 -er. Dang. Dagoth. 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 -er. Dagoth. -er. Dagoth. -er. I think Dagoth. Okay, we're gonna have to, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to focus group that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, that's that's what you leave your first comment because I guarantee someone's gonna be because yeah, I suppose with Morrowind, it's one of those things where you read the word written down, isn't it? Yeah, I, they. I was just thinking they must say it out loud at some point because there's obviously some voice that, especially towards the end. And oh yeah, it must be said out loud at some point. But okay. so so yeah, poll poll for the audience. Dag off the day goth or. What's the other option? Dagoth, da da Dargoth. What's your third one? Yeah, Dargoth, Dagoth. 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 Dargoth. Dagoth. Great. This is this is the this is the cutting political comedy. <laughs> Anybody who's not playing Morrowind know <laughs> what they're even talking about. No. So this is politics. Yeah. So but I mean the it, to me, I like it it seems like like a good idea to sort of at least kick this off because we've always talked about politics on live streams for since since we've been live streaming and yeah this is like a political year for everyone really yeah you know we've seen the uh we've seen the far right get some momentum in the european union elections and then we saw macron fuck himself harder than i've ever seen a politician fuck himself which is just bizarre <laughs> Uh, then we've got oh, were there some Dutch elections? Um, there was that that uh, social democrat that was elected in Mexico, and then of course we yeah no she she's the first first um, woman um, mm -hmm. president of Mexico. Mexico beat cool, them to yeah. it, yeah. And it, she didn't even <laughs> yeah. she, she didn't even you know didn't didn't even have to be a Hillary Clinton either. You know they could they actually had a you know. Well, that was the, that was that was the genius strategy: the woman not being Hillary Clinton. <sighs> That, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, they 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 were so, so thinking, they, they were thinking about revisiting that strategy this time around, switching Biden out with Clinton. But it's like, my God, how many times? Really, don't, I don't understand. Like, how many times is they going to try? Like, Clinton just really wants to be president, but nobody fucking likes no. her. Even the people who like her don't really like her. Exactly. It's like I like her, but I don't like. I get that she's unlikable, which is, you know, <laughs> I like you know, and I, I do. Don't, no, I don't. I, I, like her, her politics are basically the same as Bill Clinton's, right? Oh but, no, no, no! They're, uh, be they're better. Than, in, they're, they're awful. Uh, you think really? I think they're better than Bill Clinton. I think they're close to Obama's. No. Yeah, I would. I would put that all in the same bu bucket. Same as same as Biden. Like, for, for, I mean, by Democrat standards, historically, very right wing, very hawkish, very pro war, very pro business, all that stuff, right? Oh, and yeah. all, all of that, like, sort of. Vague, vague rhetorical nods towards progressive issues, but never actually doing it about them. Yeah, but I don't think she'd go as far as maybe privatizing Social Security like what Bill Clinton wanted to do. I Only because of the climate. The climate, the climate is more towards like universal health care now, which she, she absolutely would not ever do because you know she's she's in the pocket of the insurance industries as much as anyone. But my point was going to be, but the, the, her and Bill Clinton's politics are basically the same. The difference is Bill. Is likable. <laughs> he's not. A, I'm not saying he's a good person. He's an awful person, but he's mm. likable on a on a very you know. Well, he's way. he was likable for the day in the Tony Blair way, but I don't think people like Clinton and Blair are likable nowadays. Like they were of their time. Um, when, I, when I say like, I, I just I really I just mean he's got a bit of charisma. Oh yeah. Like he yeah. you know he went on, mm -hmm. he went on Arsenio Hall back in the in the nineties and played his saxophone. Yeah. No, oh, have I lost you, Drew? Okay, I've got my window. I've got my window open because it's so hot. So I'm going to mute every time loud things go. It's not too bad, and I've got a uh, noise cancel. I've got double noise cancelling on this side, so I, uh, you should be okay. Uh -oh. It might even have been the case that no one heard anything if we're, if if OBS and Discord have done exactly what they should have done. We we get a lot of tractors and we get a lot of motors. It's fine. It just adds. To be honest, as I get as I as I sort of develop my. Ambient. Yeah, it just adds ambiance. To be honest, I've got my window open, and if someone starts mowing the lawn, I'm not going to shut it. To be honest, it's <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, no, I like that. It's fine. I think that's yeah, actually, a little background noise makes makes it seem more 
like you're a human being in a human situation, not a, a robot in a studio. Exactly, exactly. It's what I like about the Fed. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been thinking and like about the Fediverse like a lot lately because of well, the initiativation of everything, really. Um and I'm kind of gutted I've got so many subscribers on YouTube because it's then it's so hard so much harder to turn you back on it. Yeah. I have a look at your channel every now and then, and I'm like, oh, yeah, he's got a lot of subscribers. <laughs> Given yeah. that you basically don't make videos anymore. I haven't, got yeah. a lot of subscribers. Yeah. I'll, I'll do a couple a year, but it's just like, I've, I've, I've actually turned comments off on all of my YouTube channels now. Um, I'll try, oh, you really? Yeah, I'll try and remember if I put this one up on YouTube to put the comments on, because a bit of discussion on this kind of thing is, is, is nice. Um, but the thing is, I've stopped moderating them. I've stopped reading them. I've stopped caring about them. No one leaves yeah. them anymore. And about half of them, I'm suspicious, are chat GPT. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, and, and the thing is, it's not necessarily whether or not it is chat. It's the fact that you don't know. So many comments are, are bland enough that... It's like, I don't, yeah. it could be a bot. It could be, because a lot of times bots will do in um, like relatively benign things like like random videos, comment on random videos to make themselves like appear more human to like evade the spam filters. Um, and a lot of these like bot farms, you know, they'll, they'll have accounts on mass and then they'll like have these accounts ticking over doing very benign stuff for a month or two or whatever and then it'll sort of like yeah. trick, you know, they, I mean, the, 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 the spammers of the world, you know, they're, they're they're innovating as much as anyone else, right? And I think oh chat, god, yeah, yeah. Chat Chat GPT is going to put spam on steroids. When when more and more people learn how to use that, that's good. like it could. It, I, I mean, we've done this on freebooters before, right? Like it it could it could kill the internet. I think the internet is kind of dying a little bit in a good way. Or well, it could kill the it could kill the internet, or it could kill. Yeah, I think this is maybe where mm. you were going. It could kill spam in that people will start which is what i do with email and mm. like like just say email is not a mechanism for corporations to notify me of anything email i'm only going to accept emails from my friends from human beings who are my friends mm. and take email back to what it should yeah and i think it might do a similar thing to the internet i think it might lead to a mass retreat from the kind of places where those things are active to things like Fedi. hopefully i mean mm. you could very easily plug that gpt into Fedi, but it, it would get handled i think oh absolutely i mean every now and then right we someone comes to the Fedi and gets absolutely destroyed like a like a tech yeah, bro yeah. that's trying to do a startup it's like okay i'm gonna do the next twitter but who's gonna be on it and there's no content oh i'll tell you what i'll plug into the Fedi, yep. and then suddenly there's users and content so i can sell it for two billion quid to a you know venture capitalist and then and, and then it gets blocked and, and then it gets blocked yeah. by every I love yeah. that, and that's which is a great. Thing. That's that's yeah. the right. It's a social way of dealing with problems. I exactly, love it. exactly. The Fedi and Linux and open source to me are examples of what I don't want to like say the word communism, right? <laughs> but it, is, it is. It is fundamentally. But I think. I think if because Foss, Foss is an American movement, right? Let's be frank about that. It, it's you know Stallman's American um, Linux moved to America. It's it's an American cultured phenomenon i think mm -hmm. if it had ri arisen anywhere else in the world it would have been an explicitly socialist project yeah because it is a socialist project yeah. i mean stallman's basically a socialist or certainly like a yeah, solid yeah. Socialist i don't think you would use that language because he's american yeah and i maybe but, that's yeah i agree i don't know maybe it, yeah i don't know if that's necessarily a good thing a bad thing or a complicated thing because yeah if it was more european centric then i think yeah like it would be more overtly social or like leftist it would you be losing using more leftist language whatever that language may be mm -hmm. but it might then start excluding americans and i don't know is that a bad thing <laughs> I mean, you could say you could maybe say anarchist. I think for maybe Anarch it's more yes, anarchist. And so, but it's, it. yeah, it's in it's in that it's in that ballpark. Anarchist, sure. libertarian, um, maybe yeah. Horizontal structure. The, the flip side of what you, the flip side of what you're saying, a bit of, a bit of pessimism, pessimism for your optimism. Um, the other thing that Foss has been amazing at is empowering mm -hmm. big business to surveil us and show you know ev yeah. everything that Google's built, everything that Amazon's built, everything that you know any t apart from Microsoft, arguably every tech company has built their empire on Foss, and I think that's a weakness. Of Foss lies. Can can well is this would this have happened or would this have happened to that degree if the open source movement never existed, but the free software movement did? 
Honestly, I think it still would. I think I think open source made it happen mm. quicker or more deeply or or whatever. Mm. But I, I I still think it would because it's, that software still has the same capabilities. It wouldn't have get got all the investment it got so early, so maybe it wouldn't have developed so rapidly. But I still mm. think it would have ended up. Yeah, it, well, it would have either ended up not not doing that and not being mm. very good software, or you know, because it didn't need that. But you know, co- corporations getting involved and you know coding it and making it better—that's a good thing. Yeah. It's just them using it to abuse us. It's not a good thing. I think it's a. I think I see it as a win in some ways, in that we are claiming some of their work back. You know, like it's we're sort of like yeah, yeah. You know, it's a little, a little bit of uh, some some means of production. The closest ownership. we get, to, closest we get to taxing them these days. Yeah. So I do, yeah, I mean, and also with with things like this, there's always going to be good and bad, right? And you just got to you know cut away the shit and make the best of the good stuff, right? I, I do I do think these empires being built on FOSS is a, is a big problem. I I, I see. So 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 the alternative would be something Microsofty, where they would have their closed source kernel, their closed source web rendering engine engine. Um, their closed sourced office gear. Uh, that well, would... no, no, I think it's more. I, I think I think without FOSS, these companies wouldn't really exist. I don't think they would have been able to scale up as rapidly as they did and become the behemoths that they are mm. without that. You know, excellent free software to build their stuff on. Yeah, I think it enabled them in a lot of ways, and I think I think the weakness is in the license. I think it. I don't. I don't think a non-commercial license because you wouldn't want like no your local pet shop not mm. be able to use Linux. I like, you know I want small businesses to use it. That's great, but so, some some kind of clause that limits big corporations' ability is to especially use it for surveillance and selling ads and all that. Is, is this more like um, the age what the AGPL is doing? Because mm. as I understand, I'm not very familiar with the AGPL, but I hear the people, I hear the smart people praising it is basically it. And well, if the AG, if the AGPL had been the norm rather than the GPL, then mm. things like Gmail, because th- this is the fuzzy area, right? Like, um, mm. uh, like web apps that are uh, the, where the JavaScript is, uh, the, the JavaScript is making use of free licensed stuff, but the, that JavaScript itself isn't free licensed. So mm. essentially, yeah, if the AGL GPL had been in place, then G- the Gmail interface, the whole website, would have to be open source, and then anybody could host their own Gmail, which would have been much better. Situation. Yeah. And there is a reason... Or AWS web services, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's a reason why Google have banned AGPL in every way that they can. Yeah. Which yeah. is a... Uh, yeah. I say feature, not a bug on that front, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, but uh, I, I, I think we're starting to witness the beginning of a re- retreat from you know, you know mm, the the yeah. five siloed websites that everybody uses. Mm. I think we're not. It's not out on mass yet, but I think we're we're seeing the beginnings of people turning away from that and wanting to go back to realizing that you know the older modes of doing. I don't mean mm. technologically older. We don't need mm. to go back technology wise, but you know the social, the structural sort of aspects. Yeah, I think we're seeing a return. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I I would say that the the, the on mass bit is is starting to happen now. Uh, with Twitter, I think Twitter has kind of like shaken people a little bit because it's so such a drastic, yeah. chaotic mess over there. Uh, you know, it's less like the boiling frog, and it's more like a madman has been given an obscene amount of money. <laughs> and uh, it's the the opposite of boiling frog. Yeah, what, yeah. Whatever the opposite of boiling frog. Yeah, totally. So, and I think when people are looking at like the question that like the the media people are asking is what's going to be the next twitter because that's such a media people question to ask but i'm starting to think that the 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 next twitter is not twitter not social media i think there's a lot of people i think think you're exactly right with that yeah just that that so I think social media is kind of like it's it's melting away, but also it's changing. I think that I more people I know. So when I talk about when I talk to people in my life who are not techie people at all, then they they you know they, it's just not part of their their mindset. Mm. Um, where if they have like a meme they want to share and stuff like that, it's group chats nowadays. Group chats are the ones yeah. that are taking over the social yeah. media. It's like WhatsApp groups with about. I think Twitter's, a dozen... 
We've discussed this before, but I think Twitter's always had this distorted idea of its own importance because of the kind of people, like, yeah. every journalist is on there, every politician is on there, yeah. um, and, and they sort of, and you know, media personality in general, and yeah. they create this feed, feedback loop that makes them think that everybody is on there, and that is the world, yeah. whereas... In fact, mo even at its height, most people weren't on Twitter. Like far, far you were far more likely to be on Facebook, but you know others um, than than Twitter. It never got a ton of penetration. It's just the media class thinks it's the world, and that in itself is a problem. Yeah, yeah, it's th th absolutely. It reached, I think, was it was its peak like five hundred million active users, which is like compared to what Facebook's two billion. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and 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 I say like I think it was like five hundred million at its height. Like now, in terms of in terms of just use, mm. like YouTube is is you know huge. It's not mm. YouTube's not interesting. This is interesting actually that YouTube is not a politically influential platform in the way that you know when mm. when when there's an election like there is now. You know, yeah. I have actually seen a couple of political ad, ads on YouTube, but really they're targeting Twitter and Facebook, right? Mm. They're not they're not targeting YouTube. And whereas. When I want Europe. some sort of like in-depth political analysis kind of stuff, I'm going to go to YouTube, of course, right? You know, yeah. like Navarra Media, for example, like they do good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've i got the conservative panel up here. Apologize for the second where the autoplay video. That was not my fault. That was a conservative's fault. Uh, they, <laughs> they put... you know, so you said that Macron had committed like the greatest the greatest political self-harm or whatever. Oh, yeah. I would I would say like Cameron's up there and Liz Truss is up there. The Liz Trust was great. Oh, I mean, no, it's so much fun. Oh my oh, god, every fun. day was just like, um, it's just great. What was your, what was your favorite Trust moment? Oh, my favorite Liz Trust moment. My favorite Liz. It's the memes. It's the memes. Um, uh, I think, I think. Hang on a minute. I got one up here. Uh, like the thing is, it was, it was the oh, the when she met the Queen. Uh, uh. Oh my god! I've just uh, where's the the one where she rings the bell? Is, she, is that one there? I, I've got. I think I've got For that me, one. It's that mm. speech where she's saying, "And we, you know, we import European cheese," and it's it's what she's <laughs> saying combined with like her lack of control of facial expressions because she she says we're importing European cheese and she does this weird kind of odd grin that she had. Yeah, and then and then she says something like, "This will not do," and she like. A furious expression, a weirdly angry expression. It was such a weird fucking moment. Yeah. Um, oh, what's what? Like, I'm looking for a GIF website. There's the, the list trust GIFs. What have we got? What's the t uh, Giphy? <laughs> um, the list trust. Is, I think it was the memes like that did it for me. Um, oh, this is the one. This is the one. So you can see it in the bottom bottom of the corner there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I don't want to use your app. I should have used I should have used a browser with better ad blocking. Support your local ad blocker, people. Um, what you want? You want a, is it Epiphany? Uh, this is Epiphany, yeah. Which no, does? You know. Oh, it is Epiphany. Yeah, Epiphany. I thought I thought I might give it a go because it's uh, oh, it's blocking blocking adverts, so that's okay. Privacy, intelligent tracking prevention. Uh. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to. Do I want? I don't. I'm not going to put in any passwords in. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No. I'm trying Epiphany with the WebKit engine. Uh. I. I sort of keep it just around because it is the sort of the secret third yeah, yeah, option. Yeah. Um. I mean, I say. <laughs> <the bell. laughs> right. Yeah. I think. I mean, the pork markets is the is the one everyone knows. Uh. Then there's the cabbage. Um. Cabbage. She's yeah. just such a. I know you know in Britain we use we use the word muppet to mean like idiot, but like mm. she literally looks like a muppet. Like she moves like a muppet. Yeah, she's like the female Mister Bean. You know, great. You know, she's... <laughs> more muppet, more muppet. I think more muppet. I know what you mean, but more a muppet. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Like, and it's like, yeah. Did you know? I think apparently, allegedly, she had like a like a like an eighteen month long affair. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> did you hear me? Yeah, they, they all, I like, sort of I have a kind of like if you took the okay, imagine for a moment like mm. she was her with her sort of mannerisms and her like floppy arms and mm. <laughs> inability to control her body, mm. but with Corbyn's policies. Oh my I, god, I would love that as a prime. 
You're right, like a just sort of a bumbling in it, kind of like, yeah, but like, you know, I'd love that. That'd be great. Something very sort of like affable about that. I don't know. That could be like, th yeah, but the thing is, Liz, Liz Trust could, I mean, I, I, I would say Liz Trust could only get away with being Liz Trust because she, she's a Tory. Like if she's a Labour, she'd just be lambasted so much. But because like no yeah no, I'm just putting that aside I'm just I'm just imagine her going yeah. going to some like G7 summit meeting all the important leaders and just tripping over and falling on her face and stuff and yeah everybody's just going oh but she's yeah. nice though you know so we we I, I, tolerate I, I'd, I'd legit lovely. I'd legit go to go for a drink with her like she she seems nice like she just she's just <laughs> yeah, but, she, but she's clearly not her policies were evil and mad and bad and stupid like she's not even competently evil we've 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 all got friends that are like really not as smart as they should be right and <laughs> but like we still love them you know we would never put them in charge okay, is, of it, is this a thing is this a thing that's real or is this the thing that i feel as an old man because i think it's real i don't think it's just an old man thing but there's been a decline in the competence of our politicians over the last like 30 40 years like a steady decline oh um, just in yeah. incompetence just in in, in in basic intelligence mm -hmm. and, and competence and um, sort of eloquence and all of the things connected to that. Uh, yes, but it's not just politicians, but it's more noticeable than politicians because it's more consequential. Uh, I think COVID... Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's everywhere, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more sort of important. I don't care if somebody running a business is an idiot, but, you know, somebody running the fucking country is <laughs> a problem. Well, the thing is, and I don't want to sound, you know, like, I don't know, like... Like I'm saying, you know, saying big things with no backup or anything, but I I do think that that we do like COVID hit our brains, and obviously it like it's it's that really damaged like a a segment of children's education, like you know you're, during the most developmental yeah. years, yeah, yeah. you know that's that's you know and and we do know for a fact that COVID does affect brain tissue, and. Like most everyone, yeah. you know, ninety nine percent of people have like had COVID at this point. They might not have known they've had COVID, but I'm pretty, you know, I think. You say you think COVID made made the world stupider? Yes, and angrier. That is, uh, I mean, this, this, what I'm talking about precedes that by a yeah. long time. But yeah, yeah, no, it was I, coming. I, I like that. It was coming along, and I don't know what. Oh, love, oh you need to write. You need to write an ap apocalyptic novel. You know, the kind of like there's a virus and like mm -hmm. zombies happen or everybody dies and it's post apocalyptic, but just a virus that makes everybody stupid. <laughs> yeah. And that's the apocalypse we have. Yeah. Nobody knows how to do anything anymore. Yeah. Have you seen the film Idiocracy? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's not profound. Fun, it's a fun one. Yeah. It's, it's like a silly film. No, it? but it's, a fun, it's, a, it's, it's not profound, but I think it. it I think it got criticized because it opens with the idea that like stupid people have stupid children, which is a dodgy idea, right? Yes. Like, the, the, yeah. It was essentially poor people are outbreeding rich people, therefore mm. the world is getting stupider. I don't think that's how he meant to frame it, but that's how it comes across, and that's mm. a problem. But if you put that aside, just the idea of everything, everything is getting more superficial yeah. and stupid. It certainly is. It's I, not, I, I didn't not an incorrect. I didn't wholly interpret it that way, but I can see why you did because the main character, the protagonist, is a like well, he's a working class person. No, right? it explicitly. No, it explicitly starts with like a little presentational bit at the oh, start with a na narrator saying like the problem was that like that certain kinds of people were having lots of short and it shows like a trailer park kind of thing uh... it's, it's, it's there not, it's not explicitly spelled out, but it's you know very very strong. Uh, see, because the way I mean, I, I, know, I, I don't think that's where his politics are. So I don't think he thinks that. I think it was just sort of a, a, a clumsily presented idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it 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 because yeah, the, like to me, and I it's been many years since I've seen it. But like if it, it it's like the degradation of well, it's like the uh, infotainment twenty four news cycle. You know, snippet, mm. you know, bullet news, uh, reading the headlines, not the thing. It, like, it's all of that just sort of accelerating, and this is what 500 years of it will, will do. And this, uh, this is one of those, like, sort of cliche things to say, but it's beca it's, it's becoming increasingly accurate. Like, you, yeah. you know, the, in, in the movie, they have the, one of the things that went wrong with the world was they, have this, they, had this they did a partnership with business mm. and had this policy of watering crops with energy drinks. Yes, yeah, yeah. And it's like... That's the kind of shit the Tories come mm. up with. Now. Like that doesn't. I mean, not you know. It's still, a, it's still a satire. But like, we're definitely yeah. in that territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when Rishi Snack came out with like, let's bring back national service. And it's mm. like, yeah, that's just a that's just a policy you drop because you think it sounds nice to like boomers. Wasn't a problem. My problem with it, like, 
I think yeah. you could come up with a national service policy that isn't yeah. a terrible idea. Like some people yeah. would agree with it, some people would disagree. But you know, it's something yeah. along the Scandinavian model where it's more yeah. leaning towards you know sort of civic service, civic. Yeah. I guess I would say voluntary, but it's not voluntary. Um, you know, fine. Yeah, if you come up with an actual policy, fine. We can judge it. But it wasn't a policy. It was just clearly something. Yeah. I had. What can we throw out there that will that will you know appeal to mm. boomers essentially and yeah. like bring back national service? So yeah. then they just yeah. say it, and then reporters like, well, what what do you mean by that exactly? They're like, well, you know, no idea. <laughs> even even yeah. in the even in the leader even in the leader debate, mm. um, I think it was the, I think it was the BBC one and the um, the host. It was the, it was the question time one, mm. and the host said, "But what what would be the penalties for you know? Wh how would you enforce it? What would be the penalties if uh, it, you know if somebody refused or whatever?" And uh, it was just like, I, I, "I don't know. We haven't really thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, he didn't say that, but like, had yeah. no answer. It was just like, well, you know, there, there, are, there are many ways in which we can, you know, just hadn't thought about any aspect yeah. of it. Whatsoever. Yeah, like I mean, the devil's obviously in in the detail, right? Like, I I've got European yeah. friends. Like, there's one guy I knew from like years ago." He spent his national service learning a lot of things about first aid and stuff. I thought, well, all right. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. 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 Some people just end up shuffling files for the civil service. Um, you know, uh, some people get in shape, I guess. I don't know. Like, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, to be honest, right. And I don't want to sound like a boom when I say this. Our country's also gone a lot fatter. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, sure, so, yeah. like, and I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, obviously that's unhealthier as well. But it's like, like, it just, you know obvious and, and strain on nhs and all that kind of stuff but like at the end of the day we don't want to be a fat country right like mm. uh, and it's 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 like i mean and, and again i mean it's easy to sort of blame this on lockdown but i think again this is the kind of thing that preceded lockdown i think lockdown accelerated some things rather than inventing things if you know what i mean yeah and it's like yeah. you know if yeah like if a national service would give would would, would allow people to to improve you know like a, as a, a sort of sort of scheme of self-improvement you know that wasn't you know i think when people think of national service they think you know angry drill sergeant you know they think like forrest gump or full metal yeah. jacket or something yeah. like that and it's like no it doesn't have to be you know it could be soft it could be european you know yeah i i i, I mean i yeah. what i want to say is i'd be in favor of some kind of yeah. civic civic duty national service where yeah. when you turn whatever age you know you go and work either in yeah. you know something you know work for your local council work in the civil yeah. service or or you know, like working on infrastructure, you know that yeah. kind of thing. But then, then I'm like, well, why not just make it a guaranteed job program? Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, just a base, just a base pool. I mean, mm -hmm. capitalism doesn't want this; they want in unemployment. But yeah, just basically guaranteed jobs. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't have a job, or you know, you're thinking of starting university, but you don't want to do so, you mm -hmm. want to take a couple of years and just make some money. Just go, yeah, go and work on the roads, go and work in the civil service. You know, there's always guaranteed job. That'd be fucking great. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd... yeah. So it's you know, I mean, yeah. decent paid, not voluntary, like you know, yeah, yeah, properly, yeah. Or, I, or you know, if there was the Green New Deal, like you know, insulating houses, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of things that things yeah. that we need to do as a country. Yeah. Or in fact, you could even like sort of uh, frame it a little differently, right? So, for example, you do your let's say two years of national service, right? And that maybe that might be involving things like working on roads and stuff like that, but then that is what entitles you to your universal basic income or not necessarily has you know like you know i, I obviously i don't like i, don't like, I think not universal then if, if there's a if there's no a no no, no yeah yeah no no, no. sorry oh, it's a bit no sorry i mean like this a little bit more like pen, like state pensions in in so far that like yeah no it, it's the it's the give and take right like it's the, mm. like obviously if you can't do a national service no one should make you do a national service right and i i, I would say mm. there's you know o probably some some opt-out mechanism as well right like we don't we don't want to you know mm. but um at the same time like but like i like the idea of a universal basic income and the it, i mean the two policies are separate i'm not i'm not actually really linking them it's just like it's I don't know. It's just like yeah. give, give and take, really. You know? There was, there was. I think there was some talk somewhere of um, national service. You do like two years or whatever mm. it was, like a year or two national service, and then mm. your education is paid for. Then you go to university mm. and you get it for free. Yeah. I'm like, mm, I don't know. I, I think the problem with policy because I think that sounds good, mm. but I think the problem with policies like that is it, it's going to make it increasingly unlikely that poor people go to university because a poor person mm. can't afford to take two years out unpaid and then you know three more years out unpaid yeah. and blah blah blah. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh yeah. I mean, I I think to be honest, and I don't understand. Okay, so this is why I don't 
I don't get why capitalists are so necessary. So, like a lot of people say that universal basic income is fundamentally um, keeping ca uh, capitalism alive on life support, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because it's it's fundamentally economic stimulus. One of the things that kind of does does sort of get get under my skin a little bit is when we talk about spending taxes, and and, and we talk about mm -hmm. it like, oh, we're gonna buy, we're gonna build, we're gonna I don't know, build something. It's going to cost a uh, hundred million or whatever. Like, and and people talk like that. That hundred million is just like burned. It's just like disappeared into the it's ether, gone. never to. Yeah. Be, yeah. And it's like no, because well, first of all, a huge chunk of that's going to come back in taxes anyway. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's just like a velocity. In of cash. fact, often, often all of it. Yes. Eventually, yeah. To, to explain to explain how that works, like I, I'm sure most people know this, but for anybody who doesn't, like if the government wants to build a hospital, so it contracts, you know, surveyors, then it contracts an architect, then it contracts builders, and it pays all these people, you know, the money it costs to build a hospital, and they buy materials and they hire labor and they, you know, and they go and buy things in shops with their wages, and at every point that is taxed. You yeah. know, when they buy the materials, it's taxed. When they buy stuff in the shops mm -hmm. with their wages, it's taxed. So most mm -hmm. of that money, most if not all of that money spent, ends up coming back in tax anyway. Yeah, yeah. Or and on that... top of that, the government, it, you know, gets an asset at the end mm -hmm. of it, which is worth whatever they paid for it. So there's no net loss anyway. So essentially, they make money when they build stuff. Yeah. And that even that is ignoring the fact that the, the a, a government, un, mm -hmm. this is the, the, the key distinction, the key... Mm -hmm bullshit that underlies the lie that you know that we can, mm. the national credit card is up to its limit or whatever is that governments can print money it doesn't mean they always should and that's always the best way to raise money mm. but a government can print if they need if they need to pay for something they can print money yeah yeah and when i say print money i mean issue bonds yeah yeah they got yeah. other ways but totally um yeah uh, it's, i mean it's 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 a lie isn't it not 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 like the 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 the, the, the credit card well, it's a lie for a reason uh, uh, as well it's a it's a lie in order to enrich the rich and and and, and impoverish the you know the public mm -hmm. sphere and and the personal sphere but in it's kind that, of i mean it really started it started in the 80s 90s it was blair that really did it hardcore mm -hmm. what happens what what used to happen is if you want you need a hospital the government pays a builder and a you know contractor blah 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 mm -hmm. to build the hospital and then the government has a hospital that is their asset. Mm -hmm. um, what happens now is they contract a private corporation to build the hospital. The private corporation owns the land, owns the hospital, builds the hospital, is paid mm -hmm. to build the hospital, and then rents the hospital back to the government. So rather than mm -hmm. having an, an asset at the end of the thing, you have a rent to pay. Yeah. It's more expensive. Yeah. And the difference between you know those mm -hmm. costs is the profit that the private sector mm -hmm. takes, but it also means that the... the the, the government, the public sector, is slowly selling off its, all of its assets to the rich. And they're also, you know, in real terms, wages are stagnant or decreasing. So they're impoverishing. Basically, the rich are taking all the money off both the public sector and people. Is is it possible? I, I'm guessing it's not because it might would have been attempted. If, like, unions were to try and find the cash to start things like PFI schemes and academies and stuff. Is that... I still think I, I think it's the same problem. I think it. I think that. I think those things need to be state owned. And oh, so they, they, part of part of the reason for that is you need you need to uh, you need to sort of train that competence in the mm. public sector to be able to do those things efficiently. Yeah, I think, you need, I think we've we've essentially uh, what's the what's the word what's the word for made a hundredth of decimated. We've got, mm. we've decimated the um, the civil. System, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm only thinking about that as a, as a step in the right direction, right? You'd like I'd rather a union owned a, a hospital than a private business, right? It's the, oh yeah, no, for sure, of course, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the profit bill, the profit motive, is 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 awful for like, um, if you know, if you need something to survive, it it shouldn't it shouldn't really be something mm -hmm. people make money off of. I you know I know that the world is not perfect, and you know sometimes you got to grease wheels and so forth, but like surely it should be something that we 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 refrain or move away from at every opportunity. I mean, anyone with a mm -hmm. semblance. I mean, how, housing is the housing is mm -hmm. the primary right. Something we literally need to live, and because mm -hmm. because the economy is so unproductive, the only place for rich people's money to go because rich people have a lot of money at the moment is to invest in property. Yeah, uh, not as 
housing. It's literally just an asset. They, you know, they'll they will buy an empty building and it will be worth more in five years. You know, they're making money by just owning empty buildings. Yeah. Uh, but what that does is makes housing more expensive. That you know pushes the price of property up and makes housing more expensive for everybody. Mm. It's an insane system. See, this is this is actually going back to what you were saying about our politicians getting dumber, right? Because Margaret Thatcher was was quite smart in this regard. She understood mm. that to to expand the Conservative Party and to get people voting Conservative, she needed to get them to be homeowners because when you become a homeowner, mm -hmm. you jolt to the right, which is one of the reasons why they reckon... Because that you're invested. You're invested, you're in, invested in asset price inflation. You've, you've, yeah. you've, you've nudged up a little bit in the class system. So... Um, you, well, you think you have. You think you have. Think. You think you have. They've given you a crumb. Even then, it, even then it's, it's, still, it's still stupid because... You know, you you want the pro you want the, mm. the value of your house to go up because the value of other houses is going up, and if mm -hmm. you need to move, you need your house to be worth more so you can buy another house. Mm -hmm. But that situation would be the same if house prices stayed the same. It's not actually in your interest for your a house that you own to increase in value. No, uh, if it's your home, you know, if it's a second property and you're wealthy, and then then it's an asset. It's a different matter. But if it's your mm. home, it does nothing for you for the price of your home to go up. It's worth one home. You know, it's worth that's it, it's, it's, it's worth one home. Exactly. It's, yeah, yeah, it's worth one home when you bought it. It's worth one home when you sell it. So it's 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 a way to catch up with inflation, really. Or well, it's get ahead of inflation, really, because because house prices are going mm. up ahead of inflation. Usually, like I don't know, but it's all it's all imaginary. You know, you, it's all imaginary. Yeah, and and again, unless it's the second, third, fourth, you know, unless you are speculating on property, it, your house is not an asset. Exactly. In and that sense. the thing is, as well, with the property market is particularly interesting. I've seen it happening a lot with Australia, but I think it happens everywhere, is uh, cities like expand. They grow out and you can see it and you can you can yeah. predict that it's happening. Um, so what a lot of uh, Australian uh, money people have done is they've bought up houses in locations that where then cities will expand out into them. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and so that they'll be caught into a local development plan later on. In well, it doesn't even matter when; it could be a few years, it could be a few decades, because the money will just eventually mm -hmm. come back once it gets accepted into like you know municipal planning schemes and things like that. The 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 orders of the the property increases orders of magnitude. Um, it's like around here. Um, so we, I live in a small market town, and around the market town mm -hmm. is lots of farmland. Uh, and farmers love having that land, not because it's particularly good farmland, the you know best farmland is elsewhere, mm. but it's because it's farmland in a location that, I mean, it's location, 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 that land just increases in value infinitely. Sometimes yep. they'll, they'll, they'll yep. sell a bit for a, for a development. Um, they'll sell as little as they can as often as, you know, but like, it's, it's just, it's money, it's just guaranteed money for them and it's guaranteed a lot of money mm -hmm. and every now and then you'll see a like you'll see the county council draw the boundaries for where they want to do their local development plan and um you know farmers and, and landowners they're like oh i hope it's i hope i hope they want to expand into my bit i hope they want to expand into my bit because it's just yeah, basically yeah. it's just, just truckloads because that, that combines with like the other the other great evil of our time which is buy to let mortgages oh god yeah which which so again, for anybody who doesn't know, it's it's where you know if you've got if you've got enough money or if you've got a, a stable enough income, you can buy a house and then rent it to somebody else, and then mm. the rent pays for your pays for the mortgage. So you're mm. you're getting an asset. The renter is getting a place to live, mm. but no asset. You're getting an asset, and you're also making a little bit of profit on top of that. What an insane system! If you know mm. if, if if the tenant can afford to pay the mortgage, why is there a third party paying the mortgage and accruing an asset while doing nothing? So what that is you're paying so obviously stupid. You're paying someone else's mortgage. And here's the thing, right? And we understood this all too well in the 200, 2008 market crash, right? Is that, you know, it, how many landlords are themselves are living paycheck to paycheck. So, you know, you, mm. you pay your rent where they are supposed to spend it on their mortgage so you're so 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 if it's well if this alleged system is working right you're just paying off someone else's mortgage but but you're but the thing is yeah. right you could so a capitalist could then argue ah yes but it is the landlord that is taking the risk but it, it isn't just the landlord that is taking the risk because risk? if yeah exactly because if the landlord fucks up right you still lose your house. You <laughs> like it's like you still have to move out. You still well, have you, to. Like, well, you still you still lose you still lose your house. They mm -hmm. they lose 
no, if, if you say if they don't own the house until they've paid the mortgage, then they mm. lose nothing and they've taken the profit off the rent. I mean, they're mm. still they're not they're losing the asset, but they're losing the potential of the asset. Mm. It's it's so stupid. What we need we need to go back to council housing. We need housing owned by the council. You pay a rent to the council, depending on your income. Um, they make a little bit of money to pay for public services again, depending on your income, and it, and it and it and it's much, much, much lower than private rent. That's you know, yeah. my my nan, I want to go old, old man, but my nan <laughs> lived in a a semi detached uh, council house built in like the 30s, I think, mm -hmm. uh, with a, ni a nice sized front garden, a, a very big back garden. It was like a four a four bedroom house, and it was. A lovely house. Like any any normal person would love to live in this house. It was in like a leafy suburb, like a like a nice suburb, you know, leafy mm. tree, tree lined streets kind of thing. Absolutely mm. beautiful. You would never. It's not what you think of when you think council house. Right? We need that. We need yeah. everybody should have access yeah. to a house. Like um, my nan's got exactly the same story. She is three. She raised a family. Her and my granddad. My granddad was a postman. Regular old job, right? Um, lived in a three bedroom council house for the entirety of the family life uh zero mm -hmm. issues whatsoever lovely house ter it was a terrace but it was you know it was nice big rural well made um yeah. and, and the council yeah. kept up upgrading it as well like they got double glazing I think yeah, yeah 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 um and i think even they got a discount on getting sky tv installed like yeah no i was gonna say the same thing with my nine my yeah yeah it's you know and it's like damn you know that's, that's not bad i don't necessarily oppose the idea of a, one person owning their own home um, no, no, no. I, I'm not. Mm. Uh, ultimately, you know, when we live in the communist utopia, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for now, and, and, and even honestly, mm. I think there's room for private renters. Yeah. Um, so long as it's not, uh, I don't know where to quite draw the line, but there's a difference between, you know, um, my nan left me this house. I've got my house. My nan left me this house. I'll rent it out, right? Yeah. I don't think that's evil. Um, so long as you do it at a reasonable, you know, so we, we may get fed um, pushback on this, but I, I do believe that yeah. a, there is such a thing as a potentially a good landlord. Well, uh, you know, yeah, yeah there, there are good landlords. There are people like good private landlords for sure. But the thing is, you know, the, the system needs to insulate against bad landlords, right? Like the, the system is only as good as the shit landlords. Oh, really, needs to be, we need to, we need to take property as an asset, as a speculative asset. If you take that out of the equation. And you also have council housing, which is suppressing, you know, uh, uh, rent, mm. you know, the potential rent that somebody can charge. Then you, you sort of take all the, because then, then the private rent has to compete with the, with the, with the, with the um, public housing, right? And, and yeah. that's fine. You know, if, it, if, it, if it's like, you know, you, you, you pay a little bit more and you get a little bit more maybe in mm. private rent, fine, you know, fine. Mm. I, I, ultimately, mm. it's something I would want to get rid of, but uh, I'm not, I'm not yeah. immediately hostile to it. Right? I, how but about... To let me off. Yeah, by and like, like yeah, you know, rent renters as large businesses that just own a ton of property and rent them all out. That's terrible. Yeah, I mean, I I think we've probably seen the same Navarro Media clip where um they talk, they just interview landlords and they talk about their portfolios and stuff, and it's like, you know what, <sighs> you know, I <sighs> just like guillotine in it. Just just maybe, just you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe, no, uh, really, yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah. lamp <sighs> maybe... post and rope. <sighs> kind of, it's like at this point it's self-defense right like come on maybe it's like yeah yeah yeah. oh man and it's like we're looking at people for drugs and these people are no like god it's it's awful and uh, yeah it's like uh oh i've looked, completely lost my thread now but like <laughs> oh, I was, I, and i swear to god it was going to be something great as well you made yourself angry I did. I'm literally. I literally just. I do that. Actually, I do that quite a lot. You, I'm just thinking. You made yourself well shaky. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, the thing is, I've noticed over the past like couple of years, maybe last year, really. I don't think of myself as as a, a, particularly as like an anarchist or libertarian, but like mm -hmm. the more shit I see, you know, like from the upper classes, I'm like. You're yeah. making it hard not to be an anarchist. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, like it's a little bit. Yeah, like... I'm, 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 I'm def I definitely lean statist. I think there's, mm. but I'm, I'm, you know, the ideal form of the state. This thing, you know, thinking, mm. you know, the the post war settlement was was a good start. We mm. we should have done the post war settlement and then gone further step by step. But we yeah. did the post war settlement and then reined it back step by step. But mm. I, I see a, I, I see the state as the only body that can possibly do these things. I and agree. therefore, we have to we have to try and make the state better. I agree with that, and I also agree that the state 
is needed to deal with big problems that we cannot deal on a personable level, i.e. climate change. Mm -hmm. There are other issues, but climate change is the one that's easy to sort of pinpoint as going, we can't, yeah, we, yeah, can't yeah. We, we can't... Well, that's beyond the state. I mean, that's, that's pan-national. Oh, right? yeah, we, yeah, that's pan-national. Global, global, yeah. yeah. And quite frankly, and I, so, so I, I think to me, it's not a case of necessarily anarchism and libertarianism versus statism, you know, or like big statism. Like, it, you know, there's, there's, there is there is nuance in there right um you know yeah. like, so yeah like the state deals with problems that are best suited for the problems that the state deals with and then maybe you dis dissipate that to local authorities i mean to be honest oh i do think this i do think more stuff more mm. stuff should be devolved to local authorities mm. and you know some of some of the ideas that have come out of like labor's uh, green new deal stuff mm. and that is you know locally owned power stations and stuff like that mm. great idea yeah, yeah. And, and and like i say council should own ho ho housing so that they can you know use that money to provide services and blah 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 yeah and actually this is this make, is make councils a bit more autonomous both in terms of raising money and spending yeah and actually this is actually this is a good point to sort of like transition it into the election because um this is actually a noticeable difference between so this is like the first general election where i've given super serious thought to tactical voting i'm not usually a fan fan of tactical voting but yeah. my my mp is someone who i disagree with a lot politically very substantially right wing very substantially tory he's a tory sycophant and labor have put forward a really solid candidate um, she's hardworking. Her heart is in the right place. She's been involved in all kinds of low-level political matters for a very long time. Very smart. Ideal candidate, right? Shame she's Labour, but okay. So, you know, so, the, so, I, the, so I, you know, and, and there are big problems with Keir Starmer that no doubt we'll, we'll talk about ad infinitum. But one of the <laughs> issues with Labour, and I, I think this is still the same, this also applies under Blair, um, is that Labour are that they're better at systemic change conservatives seem to just don't want to do any systemic change whatsoever they are not only the party of they are so staunchly the party of the status quo but maybe shifting more to the right um but on a systemic level right like i you know you hear labor talk well, about I, yeah I, I think that let me just clarify because i think mm -hmm. that can be misunderstood like historically mm -hmm. the conservatives are the party of the status quo that's what they yeah. represent or, or they represent very you know very incremental change like let's be let's they're the, the, the party of let's be careful yeah which is fair enough um but what they've re represented since thatcher is a transfer of wealth from public and individual hands to private hands that, yes. And that's the status quo that they now represent is a continuation of their impoverishment of, of, of everybody, including the state, except the wealthy. Exactly. Yes. But yeah. Just... Yeah. So I feel, and then again, like to me, I've come to learn, and this is something I get when I'm a bit older. So much of politics is vibes. Um, and the, the vibes under the Tories is like it's stale, it's rotting, right? Things seem to be like rotting and decaying under the Tories. And that's just really not a nice vibe. <laughs> but with at least with Labour, at least with Starmer, he talks about some things. Now, don't get me wrong. He's not any kind of like revolutionary or like, uh, you know, <laughs> everything we want. Right. We we understand that with Starmer. Yeah. It's a big compromise. It's, you know, and but here's the thing. Labour leaders, even the, the sort of the centrist, centre right ones like Blair, like Starmer, like Starmer's talking about reforming the House of Lords. Okay, like I don't, you know, I want, I, I would like to see some reform of the House of Lords. Um, I don't even care what that I reform that was like. I think, that, I think that one, I think that was complicated. So yeah. put, I think they want to reform the House of Lords because they want to go back in the EU. I don't think they want to reform the House of Lords because they want to reform the House of Lords. Uh, but Blair wanted to reform the House of Lords. Oh, well, he did some House of Lords reform. I think I think Labour want to do some. You might want to say uh, you might say that's incremental changes to the House of Lords. But I think with the House of Lords, you kind of have to do incremental <laughs> changes, don't you? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think House of Lords because it could be its own entire episode, and, and okay. I think a fun one. So yeah, it would be a fun let's one. Let's not get into that right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, I take yeah. your point. Like, like a, a Labour government will make things a little bit better than. Okay, it's complicated because. Okay, I'm going to entirely put the Iraq War aside. Let's pretend the Iraq okay. War never happened, right? Blair, mm -hmm. Blair's government mm -hmm. was significantly better than a Tory government would have been at that time. You know, the, the yeah. child tax credit. You know, they they did mm -hmm. good things on benefits. You know. They, mm -hmm. they they weren't bad. They weren't great, but they weren't bad. They they, they were, yeah, devolution. Um, so so they were an okay government. 
Um, and I think the same same would be true of a Starmer government versus a Tory. I mean, yeah. rhetorically, we'll say, you know, the Tories yeah. and Labour, they're the same. And, you know, th th there's truth to that. I'm not saying that's not true. But really, uh, undeniably, a Starmer government would be better than another Tory mm. government, right? I don't... But I, I know yeah. this is not... I've literally, I've literally read you make this argument today. But but how far do we go down that lesser of two mm. evils-ism road, you know? Yeah. And and also, yeah. So they're this not, is... not going to be great. No. So... Yeah, and, and this is a super complicated question. This is why I'm always so staunchly like, don't shame people for voting, uh, whatever what you know. Yeah. Like, if if people are not voting for your lesser of two evils party, that's that's a you fault, right? That's like being angry at yeah. people for not laughing yeah. at your jokes. It's like if you're not, you know, and and I think you know because this is obviously a bigger thing in with 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 the democrats in the, in the states it's like w w the thing that democrats need to fucking do is they need to like focus on getting likable candidates right like they need likable people right and, and policy where's the policy mm. gone on the on the, like the center any cent, you know center left center right center center they don't have policy anymore they have little technocratic tweaks they don't mm. have pol the last corbyn had policy right yeah. storm has got little technocratic I just okay. Broad, so broad, broad arguments because I think we're both fundamentally against tactical voting, right? In um, in, in spirit, I, broad I think, arguments, yeah. In spirit, yeah. yeah. Broad arguments against tactical, and, and I come down against tactical voting. I think pretty mm -hmm. much pretty solidly. If you're in a if you're in a laboratory marginal and you, you want to get rid of, yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, but specific to this election, Labour's going to win anyway. Labour's going to win with a huge fucking majority. Mm -hmm. It doesn't particularly matter whether you're particular seat has a Tory in it, that's going to make no difference to what this government can do and will do, right? So there's that. But putting that aside, because that's specific to this election, mm -hmm. um, more the more of the popular vote, so say say you're going to vote Labour tactically, but what you really want to do is vote Green. They're the ones whose mm -hmm. policies appeal to you the most, right? Mm -hmm. The more of the popular vote that the Greens get, even if, they, even if it translates to no seats in Parliament, the more the parties who are in government have to respond to their ideas yes even if they're not in parliament and yeah. also the more resources that party will get for any given election you know i mean they're gonna you know the greens are gonna lose their deposits in 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 most seat in all mm -hmm. but like two seats yeah which is like a third of a million pounds right i, That's I would say four seats better. but maybe i'm optimistic <laughs> Four, yeah, four, four. I hope four. I really hope four. I'm i I'm surprised um, that Hereford North is doing as well as it is. And these, like, it's more prevalent in America, I think, this mm. vote blue no matter who. And basically, if you don't, if you don't vote Democrat, then you're enabling fascism. No, like, fuck mm. off with that. It, like, put better candidates up then. Mm. I mean, what you were saying, like, yeah. if, if you want people to vote for your parties, mm. then have better policy. Also... Mm. There's like forty percent of the electorate who just don't vote. Appeal mm. to them. Yeah, and also the thing is that with America, voting is more difficult, and that's that is tragic. See, well, we've got the ID thing over here this time, right? We've got the ID th thing over here. Uh, in... Yeah, I wouldn't be able to vote if I, I'm, I'm voting postal, which bypasses that. But I wouldn't mm. be able to vote because I don't have any photo ID. I don't have a passport. I don't have a driver's license. You have to. You, you can apply for a photo ID. So, so you can, so, so, so it's not like the system works. They've, like, I, I, I mean, it's like you, like um, Hamish got one. He gets like they give him a little printout, and you just. Yeah. So it's not. So it's basically like you can get around that. Like it's not like it's. Right. It's, I mean, is there the, to be clear that this policy is in place to deter poor people from voting because poor people yeah. will be less motivated to do this? Yes. Although Jacob Rees-Mogg claims the the policy has backfired, but. Uh, I don't know if it was you or someone else said, I can't imagine of a better cover up than them pretending that this failed. So, <laughs> I don't know. Jacob Rees Mogg is going around saying, Oh, we what should. Was, how were they saying it was, it was backfired? I didn't see that. Because people who don't have uh, voter ID are disproportionately older. Um, oh. But here's the thing, and here's the kicker, right? So, bus passes are accepted. ID and you get a free bus pass oh, when you're wow. when you're when you're sub, like 60 65 pen maybe you know what? my mom my mom got that my yeah. mom got that bus pass when she reached that age and yeah. she loved it she she would mm. go out on day trips it was lovely oh her. old people love the bus like i'm sorry I, that, that's mean but yeah. like no my mom uses it it's great like, right. <laughs> and yeah. um and the thing is is that like rich tory old people they're probably not claiming their bus pass um 
I don't know. Anyway, it seems to be the ca- right. anyway. Basically, the case is is that it's made it disproportionately harder for old people, and old people tend to drift Tory. And that was Jacob Rees Mogg's sort of uh, argument, which I am not sure if he is just talking out of his ass. And so, and actually, it was a successful policy <laughs> in even even if it's true, it's it's tempting to celebrate that, right? It's tempting mm. to go like, oh, good, old people can't vote. But I don't I don't like that. No. That is fundamentally on the, uh, and this... underneath it all. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy with the communist revolution, but underneath it all, I'm I'm very democratic, and I mm-hmm. think you know I, I don't want to discourage anyone. We need better mm-hmm. campaigning. We need mm-hmm. better political education. We need better political discourse so that these people don't vote for these reactionary parties. Mm-hmm. But we but preventing anybody from voting is a is a dangerous road to go. Exactly, and I this policy has actually made me solidify a position that I didn't previously have, which is I believe voting should be compulsory. And I I struggle with that one. I well, uh, let me put forward the argument and the thing that convinced me, and yeah. then let's see if it convinces you, right? So, the thing is, is if voting is compulsory, and I also agree there should be a none of the above op- of none of the above option. Oh yeah, of course, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So you should, but you should be compelled to check in, right? It is a civic duty to vote. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a civic duty to vote, if everyone has to vote, right? That means the mm. government has to allow it to, ma- to so that everyone can vote. The onus is on the government to get to to make voting as easy as possible. Whereas now mm. the onus is on the person voting to make sure they've got the ID, to make sure that they they know where their polling station is, etc., etc., etc. So it basically shifts responsibility uh, onto the government to make the voting process better. That's basically the thing that. Do you think that would necessarily be the case, though? Because, the like, the Tories... The, like, locking up a bunch of poor people for not voting, would the Tories hate that? Um, I would say... I'm not going to lock up anyone. And it'd be expensive. <laughs> it'd be a very stupid, yeah. expensive thing to do. But, or um, fining them, I guess, is more likely, which wouldn't be... It, I mean, it, I'm even kind of oh, okay with it being a crime without a punishment, almost. Um... It's just yeah, like it's just like it, it's just like um, we we just have to do it, you know. We have to have th- that's that's kind of it. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. If you if you skive that day, or you are like I don't I don't think people should actually be punished for not voting. I just think everyone. If there's no repercussions, then it's a, it's a, essentially I know what you mean. I, yeah, I, like I would want it to be a crime without a punishment, but like but if it doesn't, then people will just vote exactly as they do now. Or, you know, I don't uh, think it would change anything. <sighs> Other than having the onus on the government to make sure that everyone does it, uh, that yeah, everyone can yeah, do it. Yeah. That, that's that's the bit that I want to. That's the it's the it's, it's the case sh- in Australia, isn't it? Mm. I think voting is compulsory in Australia. It's, it's the, I... just the shift in responsibility. That's all. That's the that's what I'm like. I'm aiming for. Like I don't. That's the interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because... I think I'm less interested in that. Aspect. Not to say that's not interesting, but mm. you know, personally, what I what I struggle with with it mm. is. And I think this can stray into being quite classist, but mm. the idea of a bunch of people who are not politically engaged and you know don't have very sophisticated political, mm-hmm. <laughs> or I mean, I think everybody has a very sophisticated political inner life. They know what mm. they want and they know mm. what's good for the country and so on, but they don't necessarily know which parties represent them. Um, having a bunch of people, essentially, having a, b- a bunch of people who are politically unengaged voting is that mm. is that good for democracy? I, bad for democracy. I I don't think that necessarily changes. There are plenty of people who are completely clueless. <laughs> yeah, that vote like yeah. I mean, reformer or what? There are like probably twenty percent. I do actually think that's a bit. I do actually think that's a bit classist. I think people were made to vote. I think. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people understand their lives and what they need. And and also, I th- I mean, in some ways, I think this is maybe a problem that doesn't exist, or or a lesser of the problems, because our voting system is is quite easy to vote, in my opinion. Uh, I I vote in person. No, because, it is, yeah, yeah. When you, when when you, when you when you see stuff that you know the controversies that come out after every American election, you're like, mm. Jesus, it's a real fucking rigmarole over there. It's they've I don't yeah yeah like with ours we we you know and this is the thing I agree with Jacob Rees Mogg is on is that our our voting system is 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 a pride of the world you know like it's we do a we do such a good job, um you know I I I've also got to say I think. No, that's going too much onto the House of Lords stuff again. We should have a we should have an episode where we talk about the House of Lords. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I'll just briefly say I think I think our parliamentary system actually works very well in some in some ways. In some ways, yeah. Like yeah, the filtering we, process. We need PR. 
Yeah. I think if we, if we had compulsory voting, we'd also need PR. I think we need PR anyway. Yeah, yeah we need PR. And uh, interestingly enough, reformer in favour of PR. And this is an interesting yeah. thing. And th yeah. this is this is actually one of the dimensions that actually kind of makes me want to do these like political live streams is because like reform are kind of fascinating to me. They're going to be a party that gets 20% and maybe like no seats or a very small number of seats. And it's like, that's it looks like one at the moment, doesn't it? But, is, yeah. it is it Farage? Is that the one? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So like, which is a shame because I think that there's a local independent, is it Clacton? There's a yeah. local independent, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, a prospect, prospective MP there, mm -hmm. who actually seems quite decent. Not not hugely left wing or anything, but like mm -hmm. a decent dude. Isn't the isn't the Labour MP there? Not a prospective candidate. Not too bad. No, he's no, he's all. Oh, he's all. If I'm remembering correctly, if he's I'm like, slandering somebody who's good. He's he's the, he's, I, I, he's, 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 he's the the black guy with the little dog and. Uh... Oh, I'm thinking of the completely wrong person then. I hope the one I'm thinking of is like a sleeping white. It might not be Clark. Hang on a minute. Let me let's let's fact check. Let's fact check. Right. I'll get the I'll get the browser. <laughs> I'll get the I'll get the browser back up. Right. So uh right. Let's see. Uh we need we need to have like a fact checking system of some kind, don't we? Um We need we need a fact checker. Oh quickly I'll say, yeah. Mm. So, so if the if the if the election looks like the polling, right? Yeah. We're gonna have um reform on twenty ish percent. Lib Dems on ten to fifteen. Let's say fifteen. So mm -hmm. it's thirty-five. Yeah, I, I, hang on a minute. I think Ed, I think Ed Davies got a few more theme parks left in him yet. So you know. <laughs> so that's forty percent of the vote mm. for parties in favour of PR. That way, it won't be forty percent of um, parliamentary seats. Obviously, that won't be represented in Parliament. But forty percent of the of the of the public voting for parties who support PR. That's that's mm -hmm. that's going to matter. I think. That is going to matter. See, this is this is it, and this is why I think. I mean, if the Tories are destroyed, maybe they'll be in favour of PR. My God, uh, the MSN search engine website, whatever, is horrible. Is oh my <laughs> why God! You want MSN? I don't know. I just put it in. Like I've, all of these, like default settings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think Microsoft cares about my privacy. Mm. Right? Okay, hang on a minute. No water playing, please uh the clacton i think it i think it is the i think it is the guy i'm thinking of oh my god it is so fucking hard to find something what the hell what the <laughs> hell bbc come on bbc come on state funded media okay what seat is it uh it clacton uh it's the it yeah clacton. so i oh my god i'm not gonna be able to pronounce this name hovan Uusi. Nepal. Um, I mean, I don't have any idea on his policies, but he seems like a pretty cool dude. Um, he's, he's got yeah, style. I, I, I'm not thinking of a completely different seat where there's this... Um, Look at that. That's dude, a stylish... It's a stylish man. <laughs> I'm waiting for the stream. To oh. Um... Like, yeah, that, it must have been so. I think it was on yeah. some Navarra thing where they, they went to a particular seat, and there's this, there's this Polish dude with a Polish mm. name who's um, an independent who's mm. going up against. I don't know if it's an incumbent Tory or an mm. incumbent Labour, but he seems pretty cool. Yeah, it's um. Oh, that, yeah, no, it's not that. Dude. I was, no. Okay, I'm... Uh, more politicians should dress like this, by the way. Like, what's he wearing? Well, uh, he's uh, black. Is like no uh, brown, like brown wool. Uh, with just it's just just good mat pattern matching. Yeah, you know that's like kind of his thing. He's that you know he's, he's kind of like he's kind of like the stylish uh, the stylish guy. But um, yeah, yeah. You know what? Like you know, I yeah. Let's let's retire the 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 shit suits and let's have nice suits like this. Let's I agree with that. And, yeah, uh, or more, or just sort of like comfortable Ruffs. looking casual wear. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could like the Tories should be wearing yeah. ruffs. Just like a jumper, nice, you jumper, know, yeah. comfortable pair of trousers. Like mm -hmm. I'm fine with that in part, in, in business mm -hmm. and in part. But why, yeah, why do we yeah. wear this suit? Dr yeah. uh, polling, polling in Clacton, by the way, fifty-one percent reform, and the next highest is twenty-one percent Tory. So yeah, it looks like. Oh, it looks like he doesn't stand a chance. Damn it. Yeah. He'll be an MP. I know it. Because he's, he's <laughs> he, he pulls the media eye, you know, like and 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 that's that's valuable. This, it can uh, be if if they if their uh, if their policy is good is good. Yeah, if they if, if they, they pull the media right and they end up being like a, a piece of shit, then 
you know. Yeah. There's also the, you know, the the AOC effect where they seem good until they get elected. <laughs> become <laughs> fucking awful. I don't think she's awful. I just she's pretty fucking bad. Uh-huh. I like Rokana. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Although I'll tell you what, I think I think no, I Go on. I, 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 the, the fact that they're not really seriously considering Elizabeth Warren as a, as a front runner, I think is, is a, is a, is a, a mistake. Really? Do you like Warren? I do like Warren. I also, I, I like, Warren, like Warren, but she is the, she, like to me, Warren is like the, 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 the big left of center compromise, right? She's not, she's not so far left that she's going to uh, upset the powers that be, but she's left enough that she's going to give some good stuff and, and, and make the Dems popular. Uh, although that being said, I don't know if if Americans want a woman president because they do seem I think to. Think she's a bit unmoored. This is something I actually wanted to mention. Like, unmoored? I mean, she used to be a Republican, right, back in the day. Yeah, she yeah, switched over two thousand five, I think. So I'm probably going to vote Green in this election, right, because their mm-hmm. policy is the policy I, I like the most. Um, mm-hmm. This is this is a safe this is safely Labour this time, so it's mm-hmm. not a tactical voting issue. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'd vote Green even if it were. Um, but I do. There is part of me is iffy about voting for a party that isn't linked or, or tethered to like a particular vision of political economy. Okay, uh, so, uh, by yeah. which I mean, I'm, yeah, I wanted to ask you. And about I, this. I think Warren's in that category. I think she's mm. a bit of a political. Like she's a, she's a floater. Ah, uh, so yeah, yeah. I can't defend that because I'm a floater. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I, the Tor- the Tories represent capital. Mm. The Lib Dems represent the bourgeoisie. And Labour, in theory, represents the workers, right? That's how this is supposed to work. And the, mm-hmm. the Labour Party is, again, in theory, a social party. They're, they're politi- mm-hmm. The political economy that they represent is socialist. Mm-hmm. So going into an election, you don't need to know their policy. You don't need to, you know, you can just say, I vote Labour because they're a socialist policy. And I believe that socialist solutions are the best for blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Right? That's not the Labour Party anymore, to be clear. Yeah. But in an ideal world. Mm-hmm. And voting for the Greens, who are who both don't have a political economy to pull back on mm. so they can go in you know we saw this with the SNP actually with the recent leader elections like mm. they they very nearly elected somebody who was very socially conservative right basically mm. uh like a what's his name the the workers party oh a galloway galloway like a galloway kind of figure like mm. economically quite left wing mm. but socially very uh a uh, uh, right wing so a party mm. that isn't more to 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 a political economy i think can can do that and the Greens are a very democratic party, so mm. you know if a lot of a lot of Tory leavers go to Green this time, then they mm-hmm. could turn to the right. So I, I, I want a party where mm-hmm. I know what their philosophy is, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, what well, that, yeah. uh, and, and and not voting for such a party does make me nervous. That is a fair point, and because the thing is right. So so the thing about the Greens is they're they're a very like scattered party, right? There's the central leadership is mm. is is very 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 loose. Um, and they're they're very much focused around you know like their local branches have all the power basically except for the obvious cases where a national party is needed. Well, in terms in terms of policy, it's literally it's the most they're the most democratic party. I think they ju- they just yeah. all members just you know submit potential policy and then they all vote on it and whatever gets you know Labour sort of mm. half did that under Corbyn where you know they have a panel that votes on it but in, mm. in conjunction with you know the, the parliamentary leadership but no mm. the Greens are utterly democratic yeah same with the Lib Dems uh, if you have absolutely no life yeah. whatsoever you can watch their, their plenary sessions on BBC Parliament oh my god <laughs> yeah. and they're, they're kind yeah. of funny like actually because you get to see like the slightly wacky Lib Dems and their slightly wacky policies and it's like and it's it's all right. It's charming. It's endearing. I I I quite liked old school Green Party policy with like where they used to get a little wacky with it. Um, <laughs> so like with their with their aviation policy, obviously they want to decarbonize aviation, but they they were mentioning things like dirigibles and stuff like that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want dirigibles. I'm going I'm going to vote for the dirigible party. I want to vote for the monorail party. No, 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 no. The Greens and the Lib Dems have this, have a similar kind of thing going on mm. where they they will campaign very specifically locally, mm. and they can and they can both be a bit nimbyish on a local level, right? Yeah, they can, they can even you know they can oppose social housing, they can oppose wind farms even on a local yeah. level because they're protecting the environment, which is in, mm. in Tory areas. 
and then on a national level, yeah. And I think I think that again, that's because they're not moored to a, a particular yeah. view of political and, economy. And and it is quite um, in rural areas. Greens will often uh, be campaigning on similar issues to Conservatives on the NIMBY-ish side of things. Yeah, that, that is a big, yeah, you know, yeah. which is why they're getting because two of the seats they're potentially winning are fairly, you know, progressive seats in inverted commas, and two of them are yeah. essentially Tory seats that they're that they're looking to win, and they're looking to win, yeah, yeah. on those kind of grounds, right? Yeah, and like, that does make me a bit nervous. Having said that, the leader or one of the two joint leaders, Carla, mm, mm. in the debates, I, I, she's very charismatic. Yeah. Eh? She was a bit nervous in the first one. She warmed mm. up a bit more in the second one, and she, I enjoyed her a lot. She's yeah. really cool. I don't. I hope this isn't like too like politically incorrect to say, right? So I'm <laughs> sorry if this is like, but she kind of has like cheeky lesbian energy. And I, 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 no, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, and I really yeah. like that. And like for, for Bristol Central, that's what you want, right? You know, you want, you want cheeky for anyone. Yeah, um, I would be. I don't, I don't think in my life I've ever felt sort of any, 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 anything re resembling pride about my prime minister, right? You know, mm. thinking about like you know your your prime minister goes abroad and it's like, am I proud mm. to be represented by this person, kind of thing? Yeah. But I would be proud to re be represented by her. She mm. seems like. I don't mean not a politician in terms of competence. She seems far more competent than mm. most politicians now, but she seems more like a, a person, mm. like an actual who doesn't t talk in the rope formulas that politicians talk in. Doesn't have the mannerisms of she has the mannerisms of a human being. Mm. I like that. She and was she, she comes across like 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 you said, cheeky lesbian comes across as a very modern human mm. being. Not not you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm surprised how popular she is. I I I never really followed her too much, even though she's just across the way from me. So I, you know. I should have, and, and I, I knew that there was a long campaign that was running in, in Bristol Central for the longest time. Um, and I think this election for them is a little bit like the perfect storm because it's a Labour Green, you know, marginal. And so the tactical vote is, well, you know, it's Labour Green marginal. So you're going to end up with presumably yeah. some, and also with Bristol, vegan capital of the world. You know, green. You know, so the greens are massive on their animal rights, and um, and also it's like it's it's sort of the gay capital of the west. So certainly yeah, the gay, gay yeah. capital of the southwest. I mean, because like Cardiff is quite LGBT, mm -hmm. but but I would say Bristol's super. You know, is super, super like LGBT. I don't say super LGBT friendly, but like there's a huge. Uh, Brighton, 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 Bristol, Manchester, and um, kind of Blackpool. Mm. And so, you know, I think that's like, that's kind of like, you know, the ideal green kind of spot. When I when I ha talk, having said all that, like, mm. go on, sorry. Uh, one thing no, I have on, carry on, carry on. one thing I have noticed when talking with like Plaid Cymru, because a lot of people are like, oh, Greens and Plaid Cymru, these are basically very very similar policy based parties with maybe different focus in di is in different areas. Obviously, Plaid yeah. like they're nationalists, so they want to push the Welsh language. They obviously want independence, and 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 you know, I'm I'm pretty like always a little bit skeptical of nationalism, even when it's leftist progressive nationalism. It nationalism mm. to me is a little bit. Uh, it feels a little bit like manipulative or a little bit like i don't know like i mean i know what you mean I yeah know what you mean yeah even when it's not ethno-nationalist it's still appealing to something that that we find a bit you know. yeah like it's almost like see i i'm like we're humans before anything else right like that's the thing yeah um i don't like identifying myself as being as being like i don't i don't like the idea of an, an identity being focused around the idea of i'm not like you which yeah. which sometimes <laughs> yeah. nationalism kind of yeah. drifts into um yeah you know good kind of identity i am me bad kind of identity i'm not you is it's kind of like the the sort of the yeah the quick... yeah but with plaid come but they're nice people and their hearts in the nice place uh, right place and all that kind of thing so on a i've got to say from an external mm. perspective as an english a dirty mm. english like plaid don't come across like the nationalism seems to be very much in the back seat even compared to the, say the smp Yes, I suppose. Like, yeah, like it depends where you go, because because Plaid can be quite different in 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 different areas in terms of the the essence yeah, of yeah. them. But the thing that that had it, someone explained it to me is that like Plaid are like the working class Greens. So like the appeal, yeah, is that Greens are like more maybe like the academic class. They're sort of like you know thinkers, yeah, policy yeah. wonks, all that kind of thing. Whereas like Plaid are a bit more like. 
Urgh, nationalism, urgh, roll up your sleeves, miners, <laughs> sheep, urgh, you know. Yep. And um, miners. Yeah, and this is why I think co leftist coalitions are better than uh, than than being too overly structured because yeah, there'll be different different facets of leftism that appeal to different people, and we should we should be putting people where they feel that they can do the most benefit to, we need, to their causes. This is this is this is this is Labour's fundamental problem at the moment mm. is that like the red wall sort of you know the working class traditional mm. Labour vote isn't really with. I mean, maybe a bit more this election. Well, I don't know. They're probably going to reform, mm. but. We we do need a part, yeah. We need something like Plaid in England that can represent those people, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, like you say, I'd 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 love I'd love to see, I'd love to see uh, a, a government that is a coalition of left wing mm. parties, meaning you know Labour and everything leftward, mm. rather than just a Labour government. I think that would be much healthier. Yeah, because we've got like a, the N H, or we had. I don't know if they're still about the the N H S Action Party. Um, <laughs> yeah. which which obviously they're a single issue party. More money for the NHS basically was was their big headline policy. I like see the thing is with a party like that, you know exactly where they stand for and you know exactly what they're going for, right? Now if you're okay, okay. this is where I come back to the political economy thing though. Mm -hmm. Like that, that, that policy is not isolated mm -hmm. from everything else. You've got to have mm -hmm. a you've got to have an idea of the, how the whole country mm -hmm. works oh, in order yeah. to make that happen. Not yeah. Because yeah, I, I don't like single issue parties. Because the thing, well, the thing is, is that like, because like a lot of the like sort of green and Plaid and all that, kind of, they they were a little bit critical of of the NHS Action Party so for the for that reason. Yeah, uh, because the the, NHS, yeah. uh, uh, the underlying you know accompanying policies of the NHS Action Party were relatively green, progressive -y kind of things, right? So so yeah, yeah. if you, so logically the 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 pragmatic thing to do would be rather than setting up your own party would be to set up a like a faction within another party like maybe the greens yeah use yeah. that m em emphasis you know i it's it's a little bit like um you know if in in single party like was well, like the ccp for example right you have different institutions within the CV, uh, ccp you have different yeah. factions you have yeah. different things and it's like it's a lot more. It seems from just from the outside. I I don't know much about this, so I'm I'm sure I'll be corrected on so many issues. But it's like it seems like there's more flexibility because it's not formalized in these century, well not century, like decades old party structures. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we have seen China do big policy changes in short amounts of time. Uh, also with Singapore, um, which which have a very stable um e economy really it's it's kind of been steady since uh the 50s is it i was, I was watching a youtube video essay on the i don't know why i was watching the youtube video on the essay on the uh, economy of singapore but <laughs> it was like yeah something like uh, oh no it was it was fucking it was like, like i watched a, it was a fucking video essay right this is fucking yeah this is this is the fucking age we're living in now it started out like fallout or something like that it's like a video and then like a, and then it sort of <laughs> it said this is like the history of the fucking Singaporean <laughs> economy. It's like, but it was it was really well presented, really interesting. And yeah, so like they, you know, they they their their economic projects span over the courses of, of long periods of time because, yeah. of course, they've got that. I mean, that one, one of the I think I think Singapore. I think I'm right that I'm thinking thinking of Singapore. That like they're a kind of weirdly mixed bag of of, sort of quite socialist policy and very mm. hyper capitalist policy. Yeah. right. Like I believe all the. Um, or something like 90, 90 plus percent of the land there is owned by the state. Something like um, that, yeah. And, and, and you know, rented, uh, which is obviously a, an incredibly left-wing policy, but then mm. they're also, yeah, in, in other ways, kind of like hyper-capitalist. They're, they're an odd mm. one. They are an odd one, and they're very interesting because, like, China have taken a lot of um, leads from their successes. Um, mm. So, and, you know, so... Um, that's yeah yeah I, I to be honest i think china and ccp are probably is probably another one we could do a whole episode on um because yeah i i yeah. I, I often want to bring china up mm -hmm. and often as like a positive example of of government done well in in a mm -hmm. sort of, in a kind of technocratic sense like mm -hmm. the structure of their government you know their five-year plans mm -hmm. the way they're very democratically responsible to the people they represent mm -hmm. the way they um <laughs> The way they internally promote and uh, train people and stuff like that is all great, but you can't bring up China without somebody going, yeah, but you know, authoritarian human rights abuses, blah blah blah, mm. which is like you you need to do like twenty minutes of caveating before you say anything good about them. Yeah, so we can we can knock all of that out at the beginning of one because it's like yeah, you know. if we could do yeah, we need an episode on China, an episode <laughs> on the House of Lords, yeah, I, Actually, I, I, an episode on BRICS, I think, en encompassing China. Uh, sorry, an episode on uh, BRICS. Bricks. 
Bri- not 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 the building material. Mm. Uh, you know, B capital B R I C S Brazil, Russia, um, India, China. Oh right, yeah, South Africa. You know, the the anti the anti NATO or the mm. non NATO alliance. Yeah. Country. yeah. Although I feel, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, like anyway, I, I forget why I brought that up even in the first place as well because it's like <laughs> <laughs> we've actually said very little about this election in particular. And there's two two things I want to mention. Mm-hmm. Just oddity. This this election is fucking weird. Yeah, right. It feels weird. The Tories aren't campaigning. Basically, they're just throwing out ideas that they have now mm. and then. Um, the Tories are going to be decimated. But mm. two two things that mm. I just can't quite get over. Mm-hmm. So, Labour are probably going to have the biggest majority in history, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, excluding things like national governments in the 30s. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but they're also going to have, possibly, or if not, then close, um, the lowest share of the popular vote for the winning party in history. The biggest majority mm. in history on the lowest share of the vote. Because the sort of popular, con- the popular, not consensus, but the vibe is Labour are doing really well, right? Mm-hmm. But, are doing so I know well. what you're going to say. Doing... I, know, I know exactly where you're going with this. No, yeah. no, no, I'm not even going to bring up. They're doing, they're doing in, terms of pop, in terms of share of the popular vote, they're doing terribly. Yeah. This is a bad, by, by electoral history, this is a bad performance for the Labour Party in terms of popular vote. Yeah, they're being handed an election but yeah. <laughs> they're being handed an election by reform. Now, yes. if you look at... Well, the, the, I think these two things are connected, obviously. Mm. The absolute collapse of the Tory party, mm-hmm. the aftermath of Brexit. Like, mm. there's a bunch of things feeding into that. But yeah, yeah. ultimately, reform are the ones who are sticking the dagger in, right? Yeah. See, I, I mean, a vote for, for, for reform is kind of a vote for Starmer in this particular instance. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, no, I mean, a vote for reform. Well, no, vote for reform I, think like... said, I think I've said a couple of times, like, if you're, if you're a strategically minded, like, Labour mm. no matter what kind of person, mm. you should be out campaigning for reform in, mm. in Labour Tory marginals. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet it's kind of like as a as a as a as a white guy. I bet it's kind of fun to campaign on reform. You're just going out there <laughs> it's like a role play activist, like a role play. Yeah, like you just get blotto. <laughs> fucking, fucking immigrant, am I right? Yeah, it's like oh, you got to dodge the milkshakes. You know, I'll have a couple of I'll have a couple of milkshakes to throw back. You know, it's, bah, bah. <laughs> you know, it's like. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to OnlyFans girls throwing milkshakes over me. It's, you know, it's. <laughs> That's your king. You know, yeah. Some people pay a lot of money for that. You know, it's like. <laughs> so yeah, I think. Oh, do you see? I don't think it was an inside job, but like, it does kind of feel like. Oh my god! If you had both a dairy fetish and a humiliation fetish, Farage was like. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Like, I do walking I, a little bit weird. Yeah, I, I do kind of feel like a lot of these politicians must have like a humiliation fetish. I, I think Farage is one because it's Why like, else would you? yeah, because he 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 kind of loves it when he gets these 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 milkshake yeah. PR things. Like, you know, and, and to be honest, I I I don't even blame the woman on the basis that like maybe she is doing it for her only fans. But I'll tell you what, she's probably made a fucking mint. I mean, when he came out, it's it's a very sort of like boomerish kind of res- like humor, mm. but it's it's the the charismatic end of boomerism. When mm. when like he he made reference to the you know uh, mm. my milkshake brings everybody to the yard or whatever. <laughs> I thought that was a, like he is a very able politician. Yeah, like he's... that was the perfect way to handle that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an annoyingly. I wish we had somebody like that on the radical left who was that fucking politically capable. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, maybe Carla Denya might start making waves. We'll combat. She's, his... Yeah, she's not that. She's not. I don't think she's that. But yeah, I mean, she's, she's not. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, uh, yeah, it's probably not going to come from the Greens because the Greens are too like. Uh, I don't say meek, but you know, polite. I don't. Yeah, she, she, she's she's never going to be an urgent provocateur. Right? No, but she does. Uh, she does. She, th- she threw some shade. She did some reading. Uh, the, yeah, a little bit. I hope that I did, I did enjoy. I did enjoy on the debate when she was like, "That's what a manifesto is." Yeah, <laughs> enjoyed that line. It's like I think it maybe with a couple of years because I remember Caroline Lucas back in like when she started out on the circuit and she wasn't that great when she started, but. With a you know when 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 a few years on she was she was she was a lot better at debating and a lot better at she had very I like her a lot I like I like mm. hearing her talk I think she's very smart I think she's mm. very eloquent um, 
but she does have that vibe of like hippie-ish middle school teacher. Yes, because she, she never yeah like, from the haircut to the to everything. Like, and I, I like that. I that is a vibe that I like. But I don't think that's ever something that's going to appeal to you know like again like Northern mm. Tory Red Wall kind of not Tory Red Wall like you know mm. it doesn't have that kind of appeal. Where I think Carla, I think Carla could. Hmm, interesting. And that's not to denigrate her. She's very cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's the perfect candidate for Bristol Central. So it's you know, yeah. So I do hope she's uh, in the same way that like uh, Ellie Chowns is is the perfect candidate for Hereford North. She's kind of got that like that mum's energy, yeah. which and she's like she's used to like dealing with Tories all her all her political career. She's <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. very good at standing up for herself and for a party. And I'd stuff love, like I just love to have her in, in Parliament, especially mm. in a Parliament where because. It looks like the Tories are going to be the opposition, right? But it's going to be it's going to be slim. It looks like it's going to be well. The polls are all over the place, but mm. somewhere between I would say fifty and a hundred versus the Lib Dems, somewhere between thirty and fifty, right? Mm-hmm. So the Tories are not going to be securely the opposition. They're going to be part of you know the opposite benches, which I think is going to give more sort of power to all of the voices on the opposite benches, including yeah. even, you know, a couple of Green MPs. I think they're going to have more voice, mm. which is, and, and, and her representing that voice, I think will be a very mm. positive thing. Yeah. Who was the, who was the guy, uh, Stephen Flynn, uh, for the SNP? Yeah, Agent 47. Yeah, he's, he, I, I like I've watched the debate. I watched one or two of <laughs> them. I do need to catch up, but I do kind of, I do kind of like him. I think he did really well. When when he's answering questions directly, he's very good. I think mm. when he's given time to orate uh, in a mm. free form, not free form, it's prepared. But you know, when he's given like a few minutes to speak, mm. he's so fucking incredibly boring. He, I, I was watching the um, the Navara cup, like the Navara sort of live streaming of the debate, right? Mm. And and at one point, I can't remember who, but one of them just goes, "He makes Keir Starmer look exciting." Oh no way! He's, no, you've got you've got to see you've got to you've got to see All him right. in that context because okay. I know the first couple of debates where it was question where it was rapid fire question not rapid fire but question mm. answer. He, I I agree he came across very well, but no, when you see him talking at more length, he's he's mm. quite boring. I wish po- politicians from smaller parties could understand that less is more, right? Like. They often yeah. try and like they try and just get as much time as they can because they think more airtime equals my face on the camera more equals more people will vote for me. But if you have one good clap back in a yeah, in, yeah, in a debate, yeah, yeah. that's all you need. Ideally, more than one. Also, like, just this is this is trite to even bring up. This is something that people have been talking about for decades. But just that you know you know that strategic political evasiveness of like you know uh, mm. don't accept the question don't accept the premise of the question but you know mm. answer the question you you want them to ask not the question mm. they did ask i'm so fucking tired of that so and i don't yeah. think it looks good it looks like awful. In, in the last in the last debate mm. in the last debate um, fiona mm. bruce asked mm. uh Keir Starmer, so in, in 2019 mm. you said uh, jeremy corbyn would make a great prime minister mm-hmm. um were you lying then or are you lying now mm. and he and his answer was just uh i didn't think labor would win yeah which that is was, not answering the question that was an awful answer and he kept he said you're not answering the question did did you mean that when you said it or did you change your mind or you know blah 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 and he just said well i really didn't think labor would just just say i was lying I, then <laughs> there's, there's, there's several answers yeah mm. but the best one i think for him is I was lying then. I was towing the party line. That was my job. I didn't think it would be a good prime minister, but I thought it would be better than the Tories. Say something like that, right? Yeah. But no, they they can't just be. They can't show any. And and I don't. I don't. For me, that works. It doesn't work well. Maybe it does for other people. But I don't think it. Does. It doesn't. No. It no. Can. It's a, it's a it's a PR tactic from like. 15 years ago that worked once and now they're just like hanging everything yes i think that's it yeah Mm. i think it worked for labor Mm. that first time it's the trump appeal like this is why trump trump just like like he just he just i don't even know what he does but whatever it is he's doing it's working for him (laughs) right like he just fucks it's actually you know he just like he just goes on the aggressive I was talking about the uh electric boats oh yeah the, the debate of our time isn't it isn't it Electrical gin or shark? Would, would, would you rather die? Would you rather die to shark or battery? Because he's nefar- He's like notoriously scared of sharks. This is where it comes from. So it slips in from time to time. It's like, it's like it's I, I choose an ocean, electrocution every time. We agreed on that. People agreed on that. Electrocution, electrocution every time. 
he is, he is he is entertaining. Like he is. If, if you believe that politics if you believe that politics is fucked, everything's fucked, like climate change is gonna happen, with like we're we're heading for annihilation, you might as well just vote for whoever's the most entertaining, you know, as as you you know, plays the best music as as the boat sinks kind of thing. Kind of, yes. But also like the Texas GOP. That's not, that's not to that's not to minimize the no. you know the harm he's gonna do to trans yeah. and people. Are, you know, well, I'm the not thing is, yeah, no, 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 no. But I totally get you because, like, but it does, it is, it, but it is also kind of like shocking that the GOP want to want to prosecute ab- uh, people who have abortions as murderers. That's fucking wild. It's. I never thought they would because they. I, I've talked about like this. There, there was a tweet where I, I can't remember. But somebody challenged. Somebody challenged Trump. Mm. This is the, this is the perfect counter to anti-abortion. People who who want anti-abortion laws, right? Is mm. well, are you going to prosecute the the you know the mother for murder? Because logically, based on everything that they say, logically they should, right? Mm. And I think somebody mm. it was years ago during I think Trump's first campaign, somebody somebody put that question to Trump, and he's just like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> just, I remember that." Yeah. Answers, you know. <laughs> and it's like, no, you don't, you know, you don't, you're not supposed to say that. You're not, supposed, but like the the rules have changed. That, that that's mm. the thing. I think that the political rules have changed, the and Overton most politicians window. haven't noticed. Yeah, not even the no, no. I think it's the way of doing things. I don't think it's even about the the open window. I think no. it's just a way of. But you can just go, yeah. I was, I was, I was bullshitting because I wanted to win that election, and people will go like, yeah, fair, fair enough. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Starmer is such a transparent fucking liar. You know, like mm. again, this is obvious, but you know, when he was when he was going for lab- labor leadership and he wanted to nationalize rail and water and mail and blah blah blah, and was doing all these socialist things. And then as soon as he's elected Labour leader, he dumps that, and then he makes these promises, you know. And it, it just, he's so transparently a liar that I think he would get some mm. props for just fucking up. Just like, I'm playing it, I'm trying to win an election here. I'm just going to yeah. say what wins. Yeah, kind of. I liked, I liked an answer he gave to a question. Maybe other people might not have. But he was asked, it was in the, uh, it, was, it was in where they, just the interview, where they, it's kind of like they did that, the, it was like the debate, but that really an interview type of thing. It was about... Yeah, the town hall kind that's, of thing. Yeah, right? that's the one. And uh, I oh, it's quite a well-known journalist who was doing the questions. I've forgotten who she is now. But she asked, um, a lot of people think you're boring. Can you give us some insight into like your personality, <laughs> your character? And Keir Starmer's immediate answer was, I've been in public service all my life. So I'm pa- I've been passionate about public service all my life. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you are a man. I mean, like, that was the right answer because I remember Ed Miliband fucking that question up. Um, what did Ed, Ed Miliband say? Oh, he said they said something like, "Oh, uh, no." He the, the one the one that re- he really fucked up was um, a lot of people saying you're not really tough enough, and he goes, "They're saying I'm not really tough enough." Hell yeah, I'm tough enough, and it's like, oh mm, yeah, don't do that. No, don't, don't do, do that. that. No, I think. Yeah, no, I think a bit of honesty and vulnerable, like just go like. Mm. Actually, my my hobby is I collect I collect Beano comics from the nineteen thirties. Just mm. say something like that. Yeah. That's like what people are oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It's like no, it, or you just say look, look, I'm boring as fuck, but I'm gonna do a good job. I'm, you know, like <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's I, 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 yeah. I think there. I th- first of all, I think there isn't is an is an, at, uh, an appetite for someone that isn't necessarily charismatic, but but just comes across as being competent and smart and intelligent. Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, I think I think yeah, that yeah, is yeah. what I mean. That's that not honestly. That, that was Cameron to an extent, I think. It was. It was. Mm. I'm not very exciting, but you know, I'm very competent. I'm very managerial, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think he had a bit more. He had a bit more vim than Starmer, but yeah. And he had this great tactic of walking off after he's done with the the questioner, like when when he when he when he's being <laughs> yeah, investigated. Yeah. It's just like I'm going to say my bit, yeah. and then I'm just going to walk off because I'm the prime minister. I can fucking do that. <laughs> so um... you see the um. The, the toolmaker thing. My dad's toolmaker. <laughs> my dad's a toolmaker. Yes, yes. Why do I know? The, why do I know the professions of all of their families? That's fucking. <laughs> I don't like that. I think we. I think we've imported that from America. I think you know, personalizing yeah. it with family yeah. stories. Although, I think in the case of actually Ed Davey, I think that yeah. is actually a, a worthwhile personal story that is relevant to his political life. But usually, it's yeah. just like let's find some relative that was a nurse or something and mention them to make it look like I'm in touch with people. And I, I don't yeah. like it. I think it, I think it plays well in America. I, yeah. I personally don't like it. No, but no, no. Yeah. When, when, when it was in one of the debates and he, and he said the line, you know, my father was a toolmaker, and the audience laughed. Mm. Uh, and then obviously they were laughing because he said it so many times, not because being a yeah. toolmaker is laughable. But then he had an interview afterwards where he was reacting to it as if he thought, I don't know whether this is a political 
gambit, but mm. as if he thought the audience was laughing at his father for being a toolmaker, which is a bizarre reaction. Yeah, that is kind of a bizarre. And if I was, 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 if I was in those audiences where you get to, ask, you know, in the debates where you get to ask a question, mm. I think I would say to Starmer, you know, can can you be clear? You've been very cagey about this. Could you please tell tell us finally once and for all, uh, what was your mm. father's profession? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, I'm uh, running a little bit out of time, so no worries. We've is there been going for a while? Is there anything we want to say that hasn't already been? I mean, I got I got shit tons of to say, so I imagine we'll probably do more of these, right? I think it. Whenever we have these rambling podcasts mm. that we've done on, you know, we 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 started off doing like Linuxy stuff and then Feddy mm. stuff and then just broad rambling. Mm. Uh, we're always quite surprised when people like it, right? Mm. Um. So if you enjoyed this, please do let us know because because mm. you know it'll yeah. make us keep doing more. Well, at the end of the and, day, and it's nice to hear. And... Yeah, I mean, I I don't make content for views, but I but I do like the comments. Um, yeah, and, yeah, w- w- which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of a lot more interested in making content for the for the feddy than than for youtube because people don't leave comments on youtube anymore i don't leave comments on youtube mm. if i like I, i'm watching some great stuff on youtube i'm watching this guy cross england in a straight line it's <laughs> fucking amazing he's racing some some gen z kids and it's it, like go and look it up it's just fucking amazing he's called geo wizard and he he does geo guesser videos as well like but he's he's crossing england in a straight line he's racing some uh some 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 gen zers so if you want to you know, and they're also doing it, and they're, 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 that's fucking great. But the thing is, and I'll I'll have a comment. It's like, you know what? This is this is this is the YouTube I'm here for, and I'm not going to leave a comment because I can't be fucking asked. But but I should do like you know to to encourage and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's like people. Well, say, I think I think on YouTube, you know that if you leave a comment, it's either going to go completely unnoticed, mm-hmm. or it's going to result in stupid replies, or you know, mm-hmm. like. Whereas on Feddy, you will, you will have a nice conversation if you leave yeah. a comment. Yeah, or either your comment will be appreciated, or there'll be you know a little bit of a back and forth and some interesting things. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. also the thing is, yeah, no. When I say when I say yeah. tell us if you like this, I, I, it's not like I don't need adoration or anything. I'm just mm. it's it's interesting, mm. and you can help like nudges in the right direction. Can't oh yeah. Well, I mean, we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing we wouldn't be talking about politics if we weren't prepared for people to disagree with us. I mean, we haven't even agreed on everything in this oh, yeah. entirety of this episode, and it's fine. I think you know it's. I've disagreed with myself. I disagree. I do. I, do, I like. I got to be honest, right? Like, we're not supposed to admit this. My mood probably affects like policy more than I'm willing to admit. If I'm completely <laughs> honest, right? Like yeah. there are some days I wake up. I'll disagree. Just... I'll disagree with things while I'm saying them. Yeah, sometimes. I, I mean, I, I certainly, and I think yeah, I mean, every... so, so many yeah. things are so nuanced. Like the, yeah. the, that way of looking at it, and there's a perfectly valid thing that's just you know over there. That's another way mm. of looking at it. Yeah, it's and fine. this is this is why like I am a floater. This is like I don't necessarily like I I, I, I have some policy. Yeah, you know, I have a pretty standard set of policies in my mind. But you know what? I just want to pull this country leftwards a bit. Well, yeah, no, yeah. I think we're probably, uh, you know, in terms of my political economy, I am a socialist. That is, a, mm. you know, that is the philosophy that I think best represents. Blah blah blah. But in terms of mm. policy, I'm I'm open to a, a vast mm. array of, you know, so long as we're going in the right direction, I'm cool. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I, this is why I don't automatically disagree when people call me a liberal because it's like I'm not necess- I wouldn't necessarily think of myself as a liberal because I think that capitalism. In particular, is 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 has has kind of decimated us in in you know the negative the negatives of capitalism at this point are pretty self evident to anyone looking and thinking. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like I I don't to be honest, I don't even I'm not super into the labels really. Like I know that they're important. Yeah, they're no, you're not a very labely person. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, I this this is going into the labels mm-hmm. more. But I mean, to, mm-hmm. to be fair, like. Marx mm. was a, a you know a thinker within the liberal tradition. It's not mm. it's not like you know like Marxists and liberals are, you know oppose about some things mm. in, in terms of those two camps. But mm. Marx is very much a liberal. Conservatives were very much in a liberal tradition. Mm. We're all our whole world really exists in the liberal mm. tradition. We need to get we liberals on side. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah, when we say liberal, yeah, when I say liberals, I don't mean, you know, within the liberal tradition. I mean, you know, fucking centrist mm. pieces of shit who would vote in the Nazis if they could. Mm. I mean, I think, yeah, but I think they're savable. I think we can save those people. Nah, I don't, you know. I think, mm-hmm. the, I think reform voters are savable. I don't think liberals are savable. 
That's interesting. But maybe that's another episode, especially yeah. if we're running out of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think re reform voters and reform is a massively interesting s situation. Maybe one of those for yeah. an episode of its own, really. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. But anyway, yeah, comments, comment, comments. Um, and it doesn't need, need, even yeah. have to be under the video. Uh, um, you can find my email address if you want. Uh, the Feddy, you know, you know how to get hold of me. You can work it out. Just Basically, say things out. We like yeah. we like talking to people. I say yeah. things out. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Drew. And uh, I look forward to seeing this picture develop. Um, gonna th throw yes. in some. I, I, there's only a little bit of my iconography on there. I need to find. Maybe I might put like a picture of like Aaron Schwartz. I like him. Who's that? Um, he's the guy that invented RSS and was basically bullied into suicide oh, by right. the yeah, F yeah. FBI, was it? Or something? I don't know. Yeah. Like he's oh yeah, yeah, yeah murdered yeah, by feds, that. basically murdered by feds. So yeah, yeah. Give me a list of give me a list of Chrissy thing. I'll put a little thing on there somewhere. I think yeah, but, yeah. Just uh, cool. All right. So uh, I I don't know how to end a stream, but yeah. Uh, good goodbye, everybody. This has been this has been the Dagoth oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hour. Dagoth. The Dagoth hour. Yes. Dagoth hour. Da da Dagoth uh, hour or Dagoth. What's, hour? This, what's a what's a kind of what's a sixth housey kind of thing to say about I don't know sleepers awakening or something? Uh, don't be a dreamer. No, be a dreamer. Like... Dreamers among us. You <laughs> be have... a dreamer. Be a dreamer. Dreamers among us. You have nothing to lose <laughs> but your chains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do -do -do -do.